My dear friends, please join me in giving some extra tzedakah, so giving some charity today for the schus, for the merit of our dear brothers in Eretz Yisrael and sisters who are going through a very difficult moment. And for that matter, for all of the Jewish people, for all of Klal Yisrael around the world, because we realize we're all in it together. We've been reminded. We constantly remember and we've been reminded that we are one. You know, just a few days ago, as we were walking under the chuppah with one of our granddaughters getting married to a wonderful, wonderful young man, and we're celebrating the, the exhilarating moment of seeing your own grandchild blossoming into this beautiful flower and getting married to a wonderful young man ready to set up a new edifice, a new home for God in this world. And as I'm standing there under the chuppah, I cannot help but seeing those images of 1,400 innocent victims murdered by evil. And then I see the image of a soldier getting married. I should say two soldiers getting married on an army base somewhere with all the soldiers dancing around them. Then I hear the siren, metaphorically, hear the siren in Kfachabad, where an entire wedding party from under the chuppah, the bride and the groom, the rabbi, the witnesses, the photographer, the had to, and all the guests had to run for shelter while in middle a chuppah. And I think to myself, how can we live in these two worlds? We celebrate while we mourn. We mourn while we celebrate. We humans. Sunday I remembered. In Auschwitz, they found that we had to dance in Simchas Torah. In Inquisition, they found a way how to blow the shoifer. In Birkenau, they celebrated Purim. How is that possible? And I think the answer lies in one of the symbols of the Chuppah. As you probably all know, the groom already placed the ring on the bride's finger. Hariat Mekudeshetli, you sanctify to me. The blessings have been recited. The ketubah has been read and handed over. The rabbi has finished his sermon, but it's not over yet. One more requirement. Take a glass, put it under the foot of the groom for him to break it. And that is to remind us that even the moment, the most exhilarating moment for a young man, for a young couple, remember the glass is broken. We're still in exile. The Bet HaMikdash is still not rebuilt. Mashiach has not taken us out of exile yet. So at that moment, it is necessary to remember we have something to do. It's not just symbolic. It's an action-oriented custom. We must do something. And what is it? Yes, building another edifice, building another Jewish home, not allowing ourselves to become just morbid and desperate, we have to be positive and looking forward. And then they realized that this is not just the breaking the glass during Simcha, not just the moment of sadness during celebration, but it also gives us an opposite message. That even during broken glass, even the moment of sadness, when our hearts are shattered, and they definitely are, at this moment specifically. 
yet we need to celebrate. How can we? Because when we focus on the bigger picture, when focus is not just about my sadness. So while being broken and so deeply hurt by this innocent loss of so many lives and those who have been captured, kidnapped, and those who are wounded, and so many families that are broken and that are mourning from all over the world. Who does not have family in Israel? And who does not have acquaintances? And even if we don't, we must celebrate. Because it's not about me, it's not a personal celebration, it's a celebration of the entire Jewish community that is rebuilding, and rebuilding an individual edifice, and together we build the ultimate edifice for God, the Beta Migdash with Mashiach.